What's in a nanny contract? What is a nanny contract? Why do I need a nanny contract? And how do I write one and present one? Hi, I'm Rainy from Oh So Simply. If you don't already know me, welcome to the channel. Subscribe and hang out for a bit. Um, there will be timestamps down below so you can skip forward to whatever part of that interests you the most. I'm going to separate it out today into what is a nanny contract, why do I need one, and then we're going to talk about how to present one and what goes in one. So first things first, what is a nanny contract? A nanny contract is literally a written document that has the terms of agreement of you and your nanny family. So whatever you guys have negotiated, whether that's in the interview or over the phone or via text, whatever, that goes into a contract and then you guys both sign it and it becomes binding and it helps clarify any miscommunications later in the relationship, which trust me, there will be miscommunications later in the relationship because we are all humans and we forget, which kind of feeds directly into why you need a nanny contract. You need one because the nanny profession, as you may already know, is a very intimate role. So a lot of times the nanny becomes a part of the family and that can kind of blur the lines of the fact that this is also her job and profession and that we need boundaries. So having the contract there gets all of the business stuff out of the way. So that way that never gets crossed. Those lines never get crossed, but then the nanny and nanny family can more naturally flow into a working relationship. So it's super helpful to have a contract because disagreements, even over small stuff, will come up like whether you are having more job responsibilities added to your plate and you know I have a video all about job creep that I will try to link up there and then also things like your pay or your review period and especially what usually ends up being the debated part is the terms of termination. Having all of that written down for everyone in the beginning to agree upon just makes it a smooth transition when issues do arise. So then how do you present a contract? If you've already been in it with your nanny family for quite a long time and you're now deciding that you want to make your nanny business legit and get a contract or maybe you've genuinely had some issues pop up and you're like, okay, yeah, now I see the value of having a contract because verbal consent is just it's just not enough if we're being honest to so like because people forget and then it becomes he said she said stuff um, versus I mean we've all seen Judge Judy people's court I mean come on guys like anytime you have something in writing that you can point to that holds up whereas just saying something that just becomes hearsay and it's not valid it doesn't it doesn't mean anything it doesn't hold any validity if you want to become legit and have everything in order or you have had problems arise and you now want to get a contract you can simply present it to your nanny family by showing them this video or <laughs> by saying hey I've decided that nannying is what I want to do for a really long time I really love my job I love working with you so I would like to make it official with a contract and everything and you know just help me start getting set up for my business Literally, you can just blame it on the fact that you have a business that you want to get started and most people will understand that because even if you work for a company like Starbucks or Safeway, you can guarantee that you will be signing some form of job agreement before you start. Same thing when you're a nanny. So just present it like that and then what I like to do is type up my contract and if you don't already have one or you don't want to make your own, you can buy mine. I made it pretty affordable so that everyone can have access to it. I have different versions of it. So there's one for a W-2 household employee nanny. There's one for a 1099 contractor like a doula or NCS. There's one for a sole proprietor or a nanny business like myself. There are all of the contracts that you can dream of over there. So head over there and get one if you need it. The link is down below. I like to type that up into a Google Doc and then send it over to my nanny family in commenting form so that way they can make comments on things in the contract that they don't agree with or have questions on and then I can reply to those comments but then that way they can't actually change my contract um, also if you buy the contract from me definitely make a copy of it before you start editing it so that you can use it for the rest of your career anyways so sending that over to the family having them edit it comment on it and then you editing it and having the negotiations done that way and then printing it off and having it signed. I usually, if I'm introducing a contract to a nanny family from the very beginning, I mention it on the interview and then I say based off of our interview I'm going to write up the contract, send it over, 
and usually I have a phone interview and then an in-person interview. That's just how I like to vet my nanny families. And so when I do that over the phone, we usually get all of the details that I'm gonna need for the contract. And then in the in-person one, that's when I give them a physical copy and I let them write it up or I text it to them and they can review it and then we sign it in my physical interview or on my very first day of work, depending on how much time they need to think about it. So that's personally how I like to present mine. I also find that when you have been in a nanny job for a while and then you want a contract afterward, giving them like a buffer of two weeks or so from when you want your contract to actually be signed and valid allows negotiation and them to think about it and talk about it as a couple and then get back to you. And so just remember to not expect immediacy because when you're signing a contract, you do want it to be pretty good before you sign it. Also, quick bonus content, you can actually amend a contract super easy. If you find a spot in there that you wanna change, maybe it's your pay, maybe it's your schedule, maybe it's added job responsibilities, you just write them in, literally you can do it with this with pen, and then you both initial next to it. Amended! So it's not a very complicated process, it's more of just the formality and the accountability that the contract brings to your nanny family relationship. Also really quick before we move on into what goes in your nanny contract, I almost forgot to answer a common question that I get, which is how long should your nanny contract be? If you're referring to the length of pages or the number of words, it doesn't matter how long it comes out to be. I believe that mine is like five or six pages long. And it's because I want to write out everything super explicitly so that there is no question about what we mean on either side. The length of your contract doesn't really matter, just make sure you get everything you need in it. Then as far as how long your contract, like a time period it should cover, I typically write my contracts so that they cover me for a year. And then I put in there that we can renegotiate the terms of the contract either at my six month review or at the end of the year, we can extend the contract, or if we like the contract that we have, I will literally just print a new one and we will re-sign and date it. So I like doing a year because for me, in my experience, I've been a nanny for nine years, and most of the time after a year, the kid that I have been working with, because I typically work with infants or toddlers, have changed so much that my job responsibilities are drastically different, and so I need just a completely new contract, or usually a year is a good enough amount of time that I come in around three or four and then the kid is off into kindergarten. Or if I come in and they're an infant, then they're old enough that they go into a daycare. So really for me, a year seems to be a sweet spot for how long to sign a contract. And if we're being honest, I really love to travel and like going on adventures. And so for me, a year is usually about the time that I'm getting an itch to move or change something in my life but I have stayed with families beyond the year and like I said I just will print out the exact same contract or write up a new one we will sign and date it and then that one will become the new valid it's happened so now we're gonna get a little more into the detail of this video what goes in your contract because this is about to be a lot of spitfire rapid information I will link the blog below and I recommend that you pull it up on your screen side by side this video and scroll along with me because Honestly, there's a lot that goes into your nanny contract and I also have linked a bunch of articles in this article that matches this video um, where I go over specifics of the nanny contract because a contract is a huge thing and so there's just a lot more resources linked in the blog that's connected to this video which is linked down below. Okay, so my camera just died. Whoops. Um, new camera angle, hi guys. Um, so now we are going to talk about if you want to write your own contract or maybe you're wondering why my contract is structured the way it is. I'm gonna talk about what goes in a contract, so how you can write your own contract. First of all, I'm gonna just list off all of the sections. Yes, sections. Under each section, you'll write explicitly what you mean and that way there's no confusion. So the sections are pay, schedule, job responsibilities, child development, emergency, baby's health, training and health requirements, transportation, family and nanny confidentiality, and of course, termination. So like I've said before, if you wanna save yourself the time of writing your own contract, then I recommend just getting mine down below, it's linked, it's only $20, and I often run sales on it. 
um, because I think that having a contract is so important that I just want to make it accessible to everyone. But if you want to do it yourself from the ground up, I totally get it. I obviously did my own. Now we're going to go into detail on what each section should include. So for the first section, pay, you want to say what you're going to get paid. That should be your hourly rate, your overtime rate, how many hours you will work until you hit what your overtime rate is, and it'll also include a little blurb about who's going to be responsible for taxes. Now in the contracts that I provide, I've said if you are a household employee that the tax responsibility falls on the family, and if you are 1099 that the tax responsibility falls on you as the nanny. And so I know a lot about nanny taxes. I've been doing my own taxes for the last like five years. So honestly, if you don't have any idea about nanny taxes or the difference or the benefits of being a household employee or a 1099 contractor, I recommend that you read the articles that are connected to the article down below that's linked down below. I have a ton of videos. In fact, I have a whole YouTube playlist, which I'll link down below, of nanny taxes. So tax season just ended here in the States, and I know that a lot of people get confused on their taxes, especially when it comes to being a nanny, because we fit this weird gray area sometimes. But I have super clear tax videos, and I even have a tax plan with me video if you already know what you want to file as and you just don't know how to or how to get started, I have a video for that. So I will link all of those up here if I can. Still working on figuring out the cards. Anyways, um, next section is your schedule. Yes, I know that a lot of nanny families say, this schedule is what we want, and then they don't, they say like that it'll vary. In this section, I put the standard schedule. So whatever the schedule is going to most often be, that's what I put here. And then I do leave room for variation. But this is also where I put the clause about I need more than 24 hours notice if you want to change my work schedule. And if you are changing it less than 24 hours or 48 hours or whatever you want to put there, then I still get paid if you're going to cancel last minute. I also put in here a clause about sick days if I'm working as a household employee. I usually give myself five sick days. I personally haven't been sick in like two years, like with a cold or something that would stop me from getting up and going to work. I just really had allergies. So I don't usually use my sick days anyways, but I still like to put them in there because you never know when you'll get sick. And when you get sick, you shouldn't have to choose between making money or going into work sick and taking care of kids. That's not fair. So definitely put a clause about that in there. You can also put in your holiday leave, um, whatever that looks like for you. So whether you celebrate all the holidays or you don't, um, you know, putting in specific dates is what I recommend, not just putting something like all bank holidays because maybe you don't need all of those off or maybe you don't want them off. You shouldn't have to take them off just because they're a holiday. Also, if you're like me and you don't celebrate most bank holidays, then I put in dates that I know I want off, like my wedding anniversary or like my parents' wedding anniversary. I know that I want those off, and so I will put those as the dates that I want off instead of other bank holidays that I don't actually mind working. Also, the schedule part is super, super important if you are a live-in nanny, which I know there are very few live-in nannies that probably are watching my videos, but for those of you who are, or maybe you're thinking about becoming a live-in, scheduling and having a very clear work-life balance um, off period and still being able to be in your own house um, because you usually, you know, are in like a bedroom in their house or in, even in a basement suite. And then also here in the schedule area is where I would put the boundaries of you shouldn't come into my space, you know, you shouldn't knock on my bedroom door unless I'm late for work or you shouldn't knock on my bedroom door after these working hours. Just something like that that'll help you set some boundaries for your physical, personal space. You'll thank me later. The next section is, in my opinion, one of the most obvious sections that should be in here, but it is the most overlooked section, which is the nanny job responsibilities. List out absolutely everything you do for a couple of reasons. One, when you list out everything that you do in your nanny job, they see how long the list is and you know exactly what's expected of you. They know exactly what to be expecting and then they pay you accordingly. 
two also helps when you start to have some job creep happen where you can point to it and say this isn't on my list of responsibilities I already have quite a long list so if we want to add that then maybe we can get rid of something or maybe we can talk about a paid change or whatever but it just gives you the exact list of what you should be doing and what you don't necessarily have to be doing like if it's not on the list you don't have to do it I have a whole article about should do what you could do lists and yes that's something that I made up and yes it's super clever thank you very much um but seriously it's things that you should as a nanny be doing if you're a nanny like your job is to take care of the child that would include feeding them and changing them and making sure they're safe and there's like a few very basic things that a nanny should be doing then there's would do which most of the time a nanny would be willing to do it if you just asked but don't tell that doesn't come across well ask and so these are the things that are usually in the job responsibility list I mean that are usually left out of the job responsibility list that somehow creep their way in and then you're mad about it don't be just put them in there or leave them off of there and then don't do them trust me it'll save you heartache and it'll also help you not get burnt out because when you're doing a bunch of extra responsibilities all the time and you're not getting compensated or your nanny family isn't showing you appreciation for those you will burn out make sure that you have all of your job responsibilities on there as well as three when you do renew your contract or when you do go over your review you can ask for a raise whether you know if you are wanting one and if you've been doing all of your job responsibilities and if you've been going above and beyond them it's just really helpful to have a list to point back to next on the list is child development this section is I titled it child development really what it means is the parents usually have goals for their kids that they want you to help the kids reach put those in there whatever they are tying your shoes potty training picking up after yourself whatever like just any of the milestones because once again during your review period when you're asking for a raise or at the end of your contract if you renew it and you're asking for a raise you can point back to this and say hey we accomplished all these cool milestones Woo and also it kind of helps you guys stay on the same front as far as your child care philosophies that goes in this section as well so whatever the disciplinary structure for the kids looks like whatever the learning situation is I personally am a huge fan of free play which kind of is a running theme in my newest podcast hello nannies that I do with Nanny Janae we review child care books and talk about child care philosophy as nannies and nanny family relationships and just it has been amazing over there anyways <laughs> so putting all of that I will link that down below please go and subscribe by the way <laughs> our first episode just launched on Tuesday and I'm super excited about it but we talk all about child care philosophy so this section of your contract is where you should put your child care philosophy and their child care philosophy and you know what you agreed on for that next is the emergency section this section is pretty self-explanatory and with every contract that you buy from me you also get a medical consent form vital literally keep it in your wallet or in your nanny binder which you should take with you at all times because if your kid ever gets hurt you need to know the order of operations like who to call first um, if you should call the ambulance or just drive them to the local hospital I've had parents that have wanted me to do both so just asking those kinds of questions that you don't think whatever come up that do and then it's just in case but also having things like their doctor's phone numbers if they have any allergies if they're allergic to any medication and then that medical consent form gives you consent to treat in the place of the parents and then it's signed by the parents so it kind of just clarifies and it also takes away the financial responsibility of treatment off of you I know that should be like obvious but hey it's covering all your bases so yes the medical consent form I put a copy of it in this section and I also write out the like what we've agreed upon order of operations so having it more in more than one place is totally worth it so the next part is a little bit redundant of the emergency section but once again more information is better when it comes to a contract and I like this section being in my contract because I personally carry my nanny binder with me on every nanny job that I have and in my nanny binder I keep all of the contracts of the families that I'm currently working with so I always have access to this list that's because the next section is baby's health baby's health is super important especially if you have multiple kids and they all have allergies 
and all of their allergies are different. Very important to know who's allergic to what, and when you start working with more than one family, which there are many reasons to do that, I will link that video up here, then you might start getting allergies between the kids mixed up. So keeping that in this section. So I go over any medication that they're taking regularly that I'm administering with also a signature of confirmation that I can be administering the medication. Um, that being in the contract, super important because then you can't get in trouble for giving medication that the parents, by signing this, said that you should be giving them regularly. So giving medication, um, what the baby's allergies are, different kids' ages, and maybe health things that they've had in the past. So I've been in jobs where babies have had seizures early in their life, and then I'm not informed, and then they have another one, and I'm freaking out because I think it's their first seizure, and you know, once we take care of the baby, then I talk to the parents, and they're like, oh yeah, they'd had a couple seizures before. That would have been nice to know, to be at least expecting it. Putting all of that information in this section, super important. Hang in there with me guys, you are almost halfway through the list. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're more than halfway through the list, we're almost done. The next section is transportation. So whose car will you be driving? Is it okay? And will you be reimbursed for gas? Pretty simple section, but vital to have. Also, I usually put a copy of my car insurance here and the family's car insurance, just in case I'm driving their car, so that I have proof of insurance no matter which car I'm driving, if I can't find it in their messy glove box or in my messy glove box, and also, um, that way everyone just is upfront about whose car we're allowed to have the kids in and if we do get in an accident with the kids, which I've gotten in a very small little bumper tap with one of the kids in my car and thankfully my contract said that I could be driving her. Her mom had no issue with the situation because it was in no way my fault. <sighs> Parking lots. Anyways, so just put that in there for safety. I almost forgot to include training and uh, health requirements for the nanny. So this is the section where I put in whether or not the family is going to be willing to pay for some of my furthering education, which I always want them to because I love taking and getting new certifications. Like I love taking courses online, getting new certifications, reaching out for things like NCS, becoming an NCS, becoming a doula, um, becoming a mindful nanny. Shout out to Alexa Ray, I love her stuff. Just seeing if they'll be willing to pay for part of that education because ultimately you will be benefiting their children. Also, this is a section where if you need any vaccinations as the nanny, you agree that you will stay updated on them and you put that list in here as well. This is also where I list um, CPR and first aid and say that I'll keep up to date on that and food handler's card or a lifeguard certification or whatever that I need extra for the job that I'm working. So the next clause is super important. It is probably the number one you need to have this clause in your contract, even though it's at the very bottom. <laughs> and the reason for the order is kind of, it helps you ease your way into the really hard stuff at the bottom. That's why it's organized the way it is. This next clause is confidentiality, nanny and family confidentiality. As the nanny, you are definitely supposed to be informed of any nanny cams in the house. I don't, personally don't mind working when there are nanny cams in the house, but it is illegal to not tell me when I'm being filmed. This is the section where I put in that I should be informed of all of the nanny cams, and if I'm not, then I can immediately leave. We'll go more into that in my termination clause, but this is also the section where, as nannies, once again, we're very intimate with these families. We tend to overhear or see a lot of stuff that we probably shouldn't, um, and so any sensitive information, like medical information, personal contact information, um, financial information, there's just a lot that we start to know over the years of working with families. We basically signed this contract and this clause is the only clause that stays in place and effective beyond the contract um, because even if I leave a job, I will never disclose information of a nanny family's privateness once I leave. And the same goes for me. So I also put in here and in my pay area that my rate that I've given the family or agreed upon with one family is private and should not be shared under any circumstances with anyone. And that's because later, most of my jobs I get by word of mouth. I don't want them telling their friend what I paid the, or what I charged them 
because maybe it's years later and my rate has changed maybe their circumstances are different and they have more kids or less kids or whatever my rate is flexible and it varies on a lot of factors if you're curious about how i find my rate and or you need to find your own rate um check out the nanny rates calculator i will have that linked below as well um but basically i put that in there so that it protects me and i'm able to be more flexible in my rate so yes, this clause will extend beyond the contractual agreement and very important. Please do not leave this out. And last, but certainly not least, the termination and probation period. First of all, I emphasize in like all of my content everywhere that a trial period is essential because while we interview nanny families and nanny families interview us as nannies, the vetting process can only go so deep. So it's very important that you have a trial period where you get to see it all happen in real life and you get to figure out if it's something that is legit what they said they wanted or if like there's just a lot that you can figure out in a trial period, especially with the schedule. I always find that the schedules are vastly different than what we've originally agreed upon and it's usually no fault of either party. It's just that the needs, like they start figuring out their needs, especially because I often work with first-time families, meaning they've never had a nanny before, so they don't actually know what they need yet, um, they just know what they want, and so then they have me there for a while, and then we realize together, like, you need more, or you need less, or whatever. We start figuring that stuff out. So, point being, have a trial period. That trial period, I recommend it be a month long, that's how long my trial periods usually are, um, but you can make yours two weeks, a month four months like whatever you want it doesn't matter but put that in there and your trial period starts from the day you sign your contract and then you know ends after whatever time period you put in there because i work with a lot of first-time families i will also usually do a trial rate my rate is kind of high and people usually are shocked or put off or whatever um if they've never had a nanny before i usually give them a trial rate which is closer to what they want the rate to be and then once i've been working there a while we can discuss you know how they feel about it but usually they want to then pay what i've originally asked because they see how much value i bring to their family and after the trial period if they feel like no i still don't want to pay you that then it's okay because the trial period is for the trial and then i can say you know this isn't going to work for me because usually if if i'm giving them a trial rate it's a big enough of a pay difference that it's not realistic for me to last on that um, but I usually do it because I think a lot of times, in my experience anyways, families see very clearly the value that I bring and are usually willing to pay me the original requested amount after, you know, starting with what they thought was fair. Also in this section, I said probation and termination. This is the clause where you will put in what you can be fired for on the spot, no severance, like just get out of my house right now. Um, it's a very short list and it includes very obvious things like theft, child abuse, um, substance abuse on the job, like just different things. It's a very, very short list, but they are just non-negotiables. Like if you were taking care of children, you should not be doing these things. Or if you're in someone's house, you should not be doing these things. Very cut and dry. There's also a section in there for the nanny. If something happens to the nanny, um, like I mentioned earlier, if I find nanny cams after the fact that I was not informed about, I can leave and you owe me. Like, I can walk away right now and you will still pay me for the two weeks that it will take me to find another nanny family. Or a month that it will take me to find another nanny family. Whatever you put in as your severance um, in the end of your contract, it kind of is just a safety net so that you can't just be fired on the spot and left high and dry. I have talked to many a nannies who have moved across the country for a nanny family and then they get there and it doesn't work out and then they're stuck and they have no income to tie them over to find a new job in an area that they're unfamiliar with. So this is kind of my solution to that, which is like your severance or your pay in lieu of working your two weeks notice or whatever um, you want to call it. So. Basically, if you fire me for any other reason, then the immediate, like, we listed those out, you can fire me for those. If you want to fire me for any other reason, you have to either let me work the two weeks 
for pay me in lieu of the two weeks that I should have been able to work um, or vice versa. So I also put the vice versa in the contract to show the families that I'm being fair because I do see that if I leave just because like I don't like you, <laughs> which I've never done, but if I do that, then it would only be fair for me to pay them for the childcare that I'm leaving them high and dry for. As a business nanny, I am a sole proprietor business. I run things a little bit different. As an employee, you do not have to do that. Um, but once again, I put it in my contract and I do put it in my employee contract just because I do think that it's fair. It's a fair exchange. If they haven't violated what is on your, you can immediately quit and just get paid in lieu of list, which could include things like finding nanny cams after the fact, um, abuse, whether that's verbal or physical of you, the nanny, by anyone in their family or pets. So there are a few things that it's just like, these are, we don't tolerate them and you will pay me because I, now I have to go and look for a new job because this is happening, you know, whatever. Termination clause is very detailed, uh, <laughs> which is why I made for you the sample contract or the contract. It's not really a sample. It's actually the full contract written out, but it is editable so that you can match it to you because what one nanny needs, another nanny doesn't, or what one nanny family needs, another nanny family doesn't. So I definitely, definitely encourage you to edit the contract if you buy mine, which will be linked down below. And also my contract, yes, this is still all for the $20, um, the contract, the medical consent form, and it comes with the contract questionnaire, the interview questionnaire. So when you go on your first interview or maybe your second interview, um, you take this questionnaire with you and you just make sure to ask them the questions. You don't have to drill ask them the questions, but you can just figure it out and fill them in as the conversation moves along naturally, or you can at the end, if they say, do you have any questions and you still haven't filled it all the way out, then you can ask them the remainder of the questions. And the number of the question directly corresponds with a blank spot on your contract that you get. So you can fill in your personal information between you and your nanny family and your contract will be all worked out for you. I hope that answers any questions that you have about nanny contracts, but if it doesn't, that's okay. I have a full playlist, like I said earlier, of nanny taxes. So if you're confused about rates and taxes and raises and all of that, that's all in there. And then also, if you have any questions about nanny contracts still, the blog that is linked to this video, that's linked down below, um, has more links to other articles that go into specifics in different sections. And you can always comment below and I will answer them pretty immediately because I have the YouTube app on all of my devices. So I hope you've enjoyed and I hope to see you back again soon. Make sure to subscribe for new videos every Tuesday and Saturday.